Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just am uh, filled with joy being with you. I, I hope you have this joy in you being with each other too. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more about that in the sermon, I think, but, but let, me leave, let me get to the announcements. Uh, Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday, 6.30 worship, and then next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. A week from this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Um, we're doing a, a, uh, a series called uh, Symbols of Suffering, Signs of Salvation, Symbols of His Suffering, Signs of Our Salvation. And I'm so excited about doing this with you. I, I, uh, I love this sermon series, and I, I think that uh, we will be built up in Christ. Um, now, um, I think you all know, if not, let me make it very clear, that at the uh, end of 2023, I plan to retire. And uh, I love being your pastor. It's not uh, at all... Uh, in, in, in a desire to get out. I, I don't have that desire. I would love to remain your pastor, for, but, you know, I've had two major surgeries, and, well, you know, you kind of you smell the roses after a while. So uh, this will be my last um, Lenten series for you. I, I don't plan to do Advent. I plan to retire at the end of November. Uh, yeah, November um, I don't plan to do uh, the Advent series at all. Um, now, vacation time and, and the like should cover the, the, the rest of the... And I've, I've uh, been very, very generous with you. I, whenever I've had a surgery, I've counted that vacation time. Um, uh, and I haven't used all my uh, vacation time except for one year. So I, I'm hoping that you will be a little... A little forthcoming, a little understanding that uh, following the end of November, uh, that should be it for me. Uh, and along those lines, uh, there is a pastoral call committee being formed. If you are interested in serving on that, please see Mike Stauffer. We will have Lenten dinners, uh, especially if you agree to host them. Uh, so, so far we have no one signed up. But we know the elders are trying to get it taken care of. So, uh, you know, help them out, will you? Besides, I, I, I love free food. Don't you? That was supposed to be a joke. Well, at least, at least you know I'm not trying out for any comedy shows. And then uh, there is a, uh, another fundraiser underway uh, for the kids' club in regards to Mike's car wash. And there is a, uh, a sign-up sheet above the water fountains in the, in the fellowship hall. And uh, so please sign up if you um, are interested in, in uh, a car wash and helping the kids club financially. I think that's it for me and announcements. Do, do you have anything that you want shared? Am I missing anything? Oh, I see hands up. Yes. The association February 26th at school. February 26th? Thank you, Sheila. At 1.30? 1.30, February 26th. That's a Sunday, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, Randy. You're very welcome. Okay, we continue with the uh, ringing of the bells and the lighting of the candles.
Our opening hymn, Count, Come Thou Fall, 37. Does our Lord use the liturgy to carry us to him? I think he does. Please rise as able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As God's baptized people, Therefore, let's do that. Let's repent anew that we may arise to live. But first, let me ask, what is confession? Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive our absolution. That is, Almighty God, merciful Father, Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequences of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of. But if your hearts turn away, and you will not hear but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, 
as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. You have heard it said of the, in days of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going to, with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the children's message. I don't have an object lesson today, which frequently I do, but today I don't. And, and I, um, I, I sometimes, I hear that sometimes I'm, I'm more complicated, and I don't want to be complicated. I, I want to be easily understood. And so um, one of the things that I, I really want to emphasize today is that God really, really loves you. Now that is so hard for us to feel, to believe, to receive. I know, I know that. I know it's hard. Because, you know, there's always a catch, isn't there? There seems to always be a catch. It's like, you don't get a gold star until you've been a good boy. Well, that's, that's sometimes even in Sunday school. Um, you don't, or, or or you don't get a uh, you you don't get the prize until you've been a good girl. Well, where's the love? Is it love unconditional? Yes. God's love for you is unconditional. He loves you, all of you, regardless of your age. But you know, <clears throat> children, he loves you. 
And so sometimes, you know, we sometimes we behave in a manner that isn't very loving. And Jesus draws out some of that in today's gospel lesson. Anger and lust and divorce and oaths, just to name a few of them. So sometimes we have things that interfere with being loved. Now, that's not too, is that too complicated? Is that? Because you tell me if it is. But sometimes, you know, but God really loves you no matter what. He loves you. And because he loves you, he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. And you see that big old cross there? That's not the cross Jesus died on, but it reminds us of, of, of his cross. And you notice the center of the cross? It's red. The center of the cross is red. Why is the center of the cross red? To remind us of his blood. Blood, is, blood tends to be red. When it gets oxygen in it, it it's filled with, it's, it's red in color. And so on the cross, Jesus shed his blood. And, you know, like a lot of us showered today before coming to church, or at least we washed. And what do we use to wash? Soap. We use soap. Well, the blood of Jesus is soap. And through the soap of his blood, he cleanses you and me from all our guilt. All our guilt is gone. We are loved. I think it's time to party, don't you? Well, maybe it's time to pray instead. So let's fold our hands and let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes. Dear Jesus, Thank you for loving us. Help us love you and each other. Amen. And we continue. <laughs> we continue with our serving him, okay? Thank you.
In Christ, we are united to God. In Christ, we are united to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Later today, the Super Bowl will be played, and I will, for one, will be watching it. Sue bought me uh, chicken wings and clam dip to make, so I can't wait. And one of you, I have one Heineken left. Where's Mike? I have one Heineken left, bro. <clears throat> but I won't have any left after the Super Bowl. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles play the Kansas City Chiefs um, for the title of Super Bowl champion. Who will, which team will win? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I have a younger brother who's picking one team. I'll tell you later if you want to know what he, who he picks. I don't know. But here, I, I, I have a prediction, though. The team, this is the team that will win. The team that plays most as a team. The team will win whose offensive and defensive players most complement each other. Picking up the blocks missed. Making the tackles the others do not make. So this raises an interesting question for me. I don't know. Maybe it raises the same question for you. Are congregations a group of individuals that gather freely for a very brief period of time? Are congregations just a collection of individuals? Or are congregations a team? I think we're a team. What do you think? Martini Lutheran Church, are you a team or just a collection of individuals? Yeah! Well, we are, from God's point of view, from God's grace, a team. The reality might be different, but what we are meant to be in Christ is a team. I think we are God's team, determined to win, to beat those who compete against God, not by defeating them or beating them up or slamming them into the ground, but by winning them to faith, by reminding them of the love of God in Christ Jesus that God has for them, by which we empower them to believe. Jesus is more than a coach. He is our God, and he is our teacher. Concerning anger, he teaches us Everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. I once preached a children's time. I, I kind of regret it. A-N-G-E-R, anger, almost nothing good ever results. I thought that was kind of creative on my part. But I do regret it uh, because well, I know that the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. In that sense, I don't regret it. But I think that anger is a normal human response in many cases. What we do with it is sometimes despicable, evil. Concerning lust, he teaches us, Whoever looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery in his heart. Concerning divorce, and that can raise some, that, that can raise some disturbing questions, like, like for single people, you know, um, doesn't lust attract? Well, it can, it does. A, a lot of people, there's a hookup culture today, isn't there? 
And today we, we say, oh, well, the only sin is calling a thing, anything a sin. Well, that's ridiculous. Don't we believe Jesus? Don't we believe him? I can sin against him. You can sin against him. Sure we can. Well, what's that got to do with the truth? Are we going to so complicate our sin that we call it okay to sin? You don't get to call anything sinful that God calls sinful? Well, that's pretty wicked. See, loving people is one thing, isn't it? I mean, we love people. And it doesn't matter to us whether they sin or not. Because we love them. But it does matter whether we sin or not. And you don't have to be just a you don't have to be a pastor to be held accountable, do you? Do you? Concerning divorce, he teaches us everyone who divorces his wife except on grounds of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery, as she remarries, that is. And concerning oaths, he teaches us, let, your, let, let what you say be simply yes or no, anything more than this comes from evil. It comes naturally to us, I think, to think only of ourselves in relation to the teachings of Jesus. For example, we naturally conclude if Joe Smith, there isn't anybody by the name of Joe Smith in here. I'm not, I hope there isn't anyway. I'm not, I'm not talking about you, Joe Smith, if there is a Joe Smith in here. I'm not talking about you. But we conclude if Joe Smith is angry, he gets what he deserves. I must be a pretty good person that I'm not angry. Another way an individual responds to the teachings of Jesus is this. Two out of three ain't bad. Or three out of four isn't bad. The individualist concludes, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm not divorced. I don't take oaths. So it's not so bad I lost. Do you and I think and respond as individuals or as teammates, brothers and sisters in Christ? How do we respond? If you ask me individually how I think you respond, I'll tell you. So if you don't want to hear the truth from me, don't ask me. We are the team of Jesus. I used to, there used to be a lady that worked at a store in a strip mall here in New Haven, and I asked her what church she went to, and she said, I don't go to church, I belong to Team Jesus. Well, I could theologize that to, you know, where I'm back, but uh, what does it mean to love her? So I tried very hard to love her. She brought up Bible study, and I said, oh, you're invited, you can come anytime. She never came. Now I don't see her there anymore, so I don't, know if she, I don't think she works there anymore. But Team Jesus got me thinking, keeps me thinking. We are the team of our Lord Jesus Christ. When do we pick up each other's blocks that are missed or each other's tackles that we don't make? How do we love each other, forgive each other? How are we present for each other? One of, one of the ways that we are present for each other is we, uh, we just don't get worked up about crying children. We just don't.
All of us who have had children at one time or another know about crying children. And we don't want to hurt anybody. So we are the team of our Savior Jesus Christ. When we see a fellow member caught up in a sin, we don't judge him, we don't separate ourselves from him or her. We give ourselves to them in our thoughts and in our actions and in our prayers. This is a person for whom Jesus lived. This is a person for whom Jesus died. This is a person for whom Jesus rose from the dead. And we conform our thoughts to this grace, to this truth. Now, we don't stop calling a sin a sin, but we will not reject each other. We will not go there. And yet we do, don't we? The reality of it is we do. We fail to obey God's command to love each other. And our failure means we are guilty of sin. We are guilty of separating ourselves from God. It is not a matter of two out of three or three out of four. It is a matter of being on Jesus' team. And since he loves us, and since he forgives us, we confess our guilt to him. And what does he do? He forgives us. How can we be any less to each other? Forgiven by God for Jesus' sake, we not only conform our speech, we can form the way we interpret life, our worldview, our ultimate allegiance. I don't know how much culture, how many cultural terms I should use, but we conform ourselves to the atoning work of Jesus Christ. It's not just one truth among many, it is the central gift of God that His Son died for us to forgive us, to release us from Satan, to bless us with eternal life, to make us a member of his team, that we may truly pick up the blocks that are lost and the tackles that are not made, and to celebrate with joy and gratitude when someone does that for us. God truly accepts all people for Jesus' sake. So anger is a luxury we cannot afford. God truly accepts all people for Jesus' sake. So we will not open the door to using a fellow human being for our satisfaction. We won't do it. And if you want to pick an argument with me, defend doing it. You'll get it. Since God truly accepts every human being, divorce for us is not an option. Since God truly accepts all people for Jesus' sake, we will not speak to them about God as if God is absent. And the whole reason you take an oath is in the absence of another person, in the absence of a person in whom you take the oath. God is present all the time, so we don't speak of him as if he is absent. Now there is a word that describes what I'm talking about, what, it, what describes teammates in Christ. That word is integrity. 
I had my integrity questioned, oh, about 30 years ago. I never want my integrity questioned again. I have worked diligently for the last 30 years to be what I speak. Now, I'm not there. I'm still trying. I haven't arrived, but I am on the journey. Integrity comes from the word, or, or some, we, went, we might think of the word integrate. Integrate means to unify, to mix together, to unify. You know, we, we integrate the baking, whatever it is, with the flour. We integrate it, the salt and pepper, with the flour. You know, we mix it together, we, we, we integrate it. And integrity refers to union. Um, we want, united to Christ, we want to overcome unbelief. United to Christ, we want to defeat sin and Satan. Smack them upside the head. United to Christ, we want to help create believers. These godly desires live within you and me because God has integrated his grace with your thoughts and emotions, with the way you interpret reality. We accept the teachings of Jesus on anger, on lust, on divorce, on oaths, just to name the few, the four talked about today. We accept all his teachings for that matter, don't we? Why? His teachings shape us. His teachings motivate us. His teachings make us who we are. We are God's children. Adopted from Satan by God himself through his word. Oh yes, my friends. My dear friends in Jesus, we want to be like him. Peace be with you. Now and always, peace be with you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise and join in the Apostles' Creed with me. Please. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We know much of your word. We're still learners. We still are learning, but we know much of your word. Ignorance is not an excuse. We sin against you for no other reason than we want to. We sin against you because we believe it's okay. We have time to repent. We have time to ask for forgiveness. In other words, we take advantage of you, Lord. And in this, we lack integrity. So we have room to grow. 
So we're sinners, like I say we are. And we need you, like I say we do. And you give yourself to us by grace. And you forgive us by grace. And you give us your word, what it means to live by grace. We put away anger. Yes, it's okay to learn what we need that we aren't, that isn't available to us. At least we think it's not. Um, we struggle with dating and, I mean, you know, guys are attracted to pretty girls. But every once in a while, um, well, so what is, um, so what does it mean? We're, I mean, we wrestle with these things. And in our, <clears throat> in our culture today, um, Marriage is very disposable. But it shall, not, it shall not be so among us, right? Uh, aside from sexual immorality or desertion, I mean, there's no... I mean, divorce is not an option. So, um, and, and Lord, you are never absent, so... Where is the need for an oath? Well, we have freedoms, don't we? But there is no need to speak as if ever, as if you are, there is no need to ever speak as if you are absent because you are always present. You are always with us. Thank you. So um, teach us Help us accept your word, even when we don't like the one sharing it with us, or we, we feel the need to you know, be in control. Um, help us be submissive to you, to learn from you. Keep us safe and keep us secure. But in the process of keeping us safe and keeping us secure, help us see when we endanger ourselves. And, let's, and help us not do that. So um, help us be a team to really befriend each other to really forgive each other, to really love each other, to pick up each other's blocks that are missed, tackles that aren't made. Let us be a good teammate of yours. Bless Martini Lutheran Church. Um, bless Peyton and, Gore and Olivia and Timothy and Faith. Bless them. and. Thank you for their service in the military. Bless our shut-ins, Priscilla and Jerome, Darlene, Carol, Ron, and Mary. Look tenderly upon the Conley and Seltzer family. Um, they're attending a funeral tomorrow, and it, 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 might not be an, it might not be an easy funeral. I don't know. But just love them and comfort them and show them that, Jesus, you rose from the dead and that you really forgive sins. You really forgive sinners. Like the one who died. Like those who attend her funeral. So give comfort and peace to all these family members. Comfort and peace. Um, Will we ask for this blessing on behalf of the Conley family and the Seltzer family? We also ask this blessing on behalf of all who grieve. Um, death raises its ugly face, and fear like flower sifts courage without a trace. But Jesus, you stand in our midst, resurrected, the wounds of your cross still visible to all, for all to see. 
Yes, you have earned forgiveness. Yes, you are alive. Yes, we have the victory. We have the victory because of you. Because of you. Bless all the people in Ukraine and bring this war to an end and bless all your persecuted people. Hear us in Jesus' name, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, Savior again. Best of the best, 194.